thing I have to do now is, uh, as I'm drawing up the plans, which I've been working on the last couple days since I haven't been doing anything with the boat, is uh, drawing up all the lines so you get your plan and profile profile perspective views of the hull. So I got to go around now with my tape measure and uh, I made up a set of, uh, of dividers uh, from some old strips of plywood I had where I have to go through and measure the distances between say uh, these ribs at this elevation along the beam line and measure that distance and then the next one down, so as I'm drawing the plans uh, from my overhead view on my computer, I can draw the arcs in, or the width, and then the arcs, and then I have to do a whole bunch of other things as far as uh, panel links and curvatures and that. Uh, tomorrow I go down and pick up my rail material. Uh, instead of uh, doing the ripping myself, uh, it's worth the 25 bucks to have uh, a whole bunch of Maranti cut into 5 8 wide strips by the uh, full uh, rough cut uh, one inch height. So I'll have my rail material uh, come tomorrow. And then before I'll put that on, I'm going to start going into the, uh, the jump stitching and uh, getting the whole uh, epoxy together. The first stages uh, before I put the rails on. Uh, I had been, or I think I had mentioned before, that I'd set the rails in before I did anything else, but I think the tension on the rails is going to uh, go against me when I try, and while I'm trying to keep these edges from jumping over each other at this stage. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, coat the edges with just uh, straight mixed epoxy and then uh, do the jump stitching and probably the... Uh, now, once I get the jump stitching done, then I'll pull the bolts and the wires, and then uh, we'll go on from there. But right now, I'm having to use my, what I call pencil bobs, which are just leftover pencils. I always seem to have left around, and I'll throw a, I think it's a, like a 5 16 inch nut that fits over the size of a standard pencil, and use that as my weight, and then I put a hole in the end of the... Uh, put a hole in the end of the eraser and then that's where I attach my string to and so I've got a center line running down the boat now it's my center line string and I got a plumb bob off of it so now I'll come along on a known distance the leading trailing edge of this board uh, is eight feet from the very end panel so now I'll go along and, and just set my pencil bobs in here and then measure the distance along at this spot and then I'll take those measurements back in and put them on the computer to make certain that the arcs are correct visually. Uh, structure, uh, plan-wise, as far as the measurements, uh, none of this has anything to do with what you will see, because what you will get will be the uh, sheet of instructions with the layout of the uh, of the panels, each individual each individual panel, which we've already gone through, and uh, the hull comes out the shape it is when you get done wiring it up. Uh, I haven't seen any problems so far with the um, with the plans, and there's one thing I'm going to do before I start working in it. I want to, after I take some measurements here, uh, close it out for the night. I'm going to flip it the hull over tomorrow, and I'll take some more videos uh, of the hull upside down because I want to look at some the outside of the hull to see if there's any distortions that I need to either uh, maybe go in and shave up the edges of the plywood or to release the, the wires a little bit and let them tension back. Um, I got an email the other day or two days ago from somebody who was getting ready to start one of my other plans asking about uh, wire ties, uh, if it was okay to use the, uh, the nylon um, uh, strapping ties or whatever they call those, wire ties. Um, depends on the size. Now, if we're talking about wire ties this size, or even the little tiny guys uh, for, uh, I don't know, maybe they're eighth of an inch wide. They might work on a strip canoe, uh, but you're going to have to muscle some of these panels around. So you're going to need something a little more strenuous than these nylon ties. Plus, the size of the, of, of the nylon ties, and they get, unless you get down to the little tiny one, uh, you're going to have to drill some pretty good sized holes. And then a bigger hole means more chance for, especially under the areas under the water line, for water to come in and start, you know, if you haven't got a good joint, uh, if it eventually gets in from a scra uh, scrape on the beach or whatever, uh, and it gets in and starts penetrating, that's just too big a hole. 
and I don't think uh, you're only going to be able to use the strength of these big guys. Uh, the little ones are just going to bust. There's no way in that warm place below my feet that uh, you will be able to get one of those little ones to pull these ends in, especially on a bow, uh, some of the sides and stern maybe, but not on the end part. So uh, let me get back to some housekeeping uh, as far as my plan designing goes, and then uh, we'll start back up again with the whole flipped over. Yeah, and I wanted to flip the boat over, look at the panels from this side up to make certain that there are any faux pas. Uh, go around and tighten all the wires again. And I noticed that I've got a, a stud here without a washer or a nut on it. I've got to do that. And I'll tighten up all of those. And if I see any spots where the uh, um, seams aren't lining up correctly, I'll I'll drill and add some more bolts. But it looks like it's uh, it's pretty uh, pretty consistent on both sides. And I'm happy about that. Been pretty good. I really haven't had any uh, terribly loose ones. I'm gonna do the wires next. You'll know uh, which wires are loose by just whittling. So just give them a little bit of a twist to uh, cinch them down, but don't tighten them down so much so they start pulling on the wood. That's why I like the uh, the 16 gauge steel tie wire as opposed to the plastic uh, 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 wire ties. Uh, I can put some strain on them. Uh, that I know they're not going to break, but they'll like the little tiny wire ties. And then if you use the bigger ones, then you're drilling such a big hole, you've got a lot of filling to have to do. So the hole is all set up. Let me uh, take a couple pictures. And uh, uh, well, I'm going to do before I add the tape to it. I'm going to take some pictures, but then I'm going to put some tape on the spots where I have some gaps, which when right in here is a little bit more gap than what I'd like to have. So I'm going to cover that with tape on the outside so when I flip it over and I pre-wet the edges on the inside before the uh, the jump stitching that that any epoxy that oozes through isn't going to create a big puddle and run around and create a big scraping sanding problem later on so uh, a couple dollars worth of uh, masking tape uh, pays well in uh, sweat labor over time so there's that curvature that I just love on those two bottom panels that have that almost a recurse curve on them And then just the nice lines. This isn't going to be so pretty when I get it in the water. And then a good shot of the uh, overlapping of the scarfs. Let me get around out of the way of the light here. And you can see how they're all stepped over. And the panel below it will protect the edge of the one above it. And then on the bottom up in here there's going to be a, a, a great, pretty good sized uh, skeg coming back down to probably about like this height. And then it'll angle in at the same angle as, as this transom angle comes up, that skeg will match it and then the rudder will attach. I'm probably going to put the lower grudging on this big bulky piece down in here and then the upper one about halfway up. So, let me get a curvature shot back in here. step back and look at that bow. That is so pretty. I haven't had a chance to use my blue screen so <laughs> you've seen this blue wall back here a long time and I haven't really done any chroma keying uh, on any of these videos so I thought I'd give this a twist on my uh, on the Vegas Pro. So <laughs> here's a little bit of nothing just to make you giggle.